good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Bram uh, and if you don't know me from Tumblr or Instagram or Twitter then I have no idea how you found my video but I'm glad that you did. Um, I'm really nervous today but I'm also excited. This is my very first video and we're going to teach you how to do some really basic designs. Um, so one of my favorite things to do is create a bunch of little simple things that you can add to just kind of spruce up any little design and give it some personality. So this is what we're aiming for today, but we are going to start from scratch. So one of the first things you do, or I do, is pick a background color. So I really like to stay in these oranges and kind of yellows, at least for most of my basic things, but um, of course anything, any background will work. It's just kind of up to whatever you want. Um, so today we're going to do something about here. So I like to drop down the brightness just because it gives it a little bit more of a uh, neutral or subdued tone rather than really bright and vivid. Um, so we're going to keep it here. So the first thing we're going to work on is some leaf designs. I know we have a lot of cottage core fans, um, myself included, and so one of the best things that you can do is add little leaves and flowers. So we're going to start off with the former and make some leaves. So when I'm choosing a green, I like to stay again in the, the warmer greens, the more olivey tones. I don't tend to often go into the teals, um, but that's just personal preference. So I'm going to choose a mid-tone green to start us off. Uh, let's try that one. So let's start with some really simple little ones. Um, you can do these little blade of grass shapes that I really like. Um, I use them when I made my grassy edges. Uh, it just kind of smooths out really well and um, they look like little falling leaves or little blades of grass. Uh, next little shape that's really easy, um, we're going to do a little bit bigger of a leaf. Um, so as you can see, it gives you this nice little almost S-shaped leaf once it all smooths out. Uh, and let's do a little bit bigger one. This one has a little bit of a fatter body. Uh, you can leave it there, or I even like to add an extra little tip like that that kind of rounds out, or I guess points out the shape, um, or you can leave it rounded uh, if you prefer. Um, let's do a little sprout because those are adorable. So start off with a little leaf, give it a base, and add another leaf. And this looks a little pointy right now, um, but in just a second we're going to go back through with another color and do some shading. Um, and that should help round it out. Um, let's see, let's add a big leaf just so that we have one. Let me make sure I have enough space. <laughs> uh, let's just kind of fill it out. Oh, I might have started too late. Um, okay, so there's this one, or you can make it longer and wider, really as long as you're sticking with that kind of basic, um, I did go too, too tall. Um, that kind of basic um, up and over shape will give you a really nice leaf. I'm going to leave it there for now. And then, of course, the cutest little one is this arrangement of four right here. And you can do it that way or oop, that way. Let me scooch it down. Um, you can even do it sideways if you want. Um, all of these will give you nice little leaf shapes. Okay, so now let's add some depth. Oh, wrong one. So when we add depth, uh, you can either choose a shadow color or um, a highlight color. I'll do a highlight color today. So when you're choosing highlights, um, I like to go, um, I tend to like to go warm. So we're gonna go a little this direction, see if we can find a yellowish green. Uh, oh, I'm changing the wrong one. There we go. Uh, see if we can find a yellowish green that gives us a nice highlight color. Um, we might actually need to stay in the same. Let's try that one. Okay, so some of the things you can do is just add like little notes here or there. I still think that's too bright actually. There we go. Um, you can go along the top edge of something to just kind of fill it out. Um, so I like to add little accents like this. Um, we're going to fill this leaf out here just to kind of make that sprout look a little bit more full. Um, and you can add little details there or um, if you want to do the whole leaf, it tends to kind of jump if the colors are too far away. So just 
make sure you're always watching that uh, little canvas piece because it'll help you track everything. Let's add some highlight on this one. Again, if you stick to just kind of uh, the outside edge pixels, it tends to blend really nicely. You can go thicker, but it doesn't, it tends to look less like a highlight and more like a color fill. On these guys, tops and bottoms as well. So there's a bunch of little leafy shapes. Okay, next let's do some stars. So stars, we're gonna go into the yellows um, and let's start with a pretty pretty bright yellow. Uh, let's do that one. So your basic cute little star shape, oh, that's gonna be too high, um, is this guy right here. This gives you that little sparkle. So my favorite emoji is the sparkles emoji. Um, so I like to use those shapes a lot. Uh, if you want the taller one, um, you can do something like this and just add extra pixels to the top and bottom. Um, and then if you want it to blend a little bit more, you can use the same two basic shapes. Let me build those again. You can use the same two basic shapes and again use just kind of a transition color. So when I'm trying to blend them into the background, you want to find something that's uh, in between. Um, and so we're going to look for... Um, a bright color that also just kind of helps us to blend and we might have to play around with it a little bit um, just to see like that one is way too close do you see how it just kind of disappears so we're gonna work on making this color a little bit let's see it needs to be lighter so that it doesn't fade there we go um, so do you see how that just kind of really rounds out the shape um, in comparison so from here to there and so you can see directly the first two and the second two, same pixels, just adding that extra little shape to help blend it together. Um, and then let's do the star that they give you. So you've got this basic star, um, but I think it looks a little eh sometimes. And so I like to add some extra depth to it. Uh, so let's go here. And then using that transition color again, we are going to fill in and just kind of help round it out and give it some more shape than it had the first time. So you can kind of build it out. Um, it's kind of, don't love that. Let's take it over just a little bit maybe. <laughs> now it kind of looks like uh, SpongeBob uh, or Patrick. It just kind of depends. Um, I think I like that maybe or that let's leave it there I'm not totally happy with it but um, there's a bunch of different ways you can play around the star and we actually might need a different transition color for this one just to really give it the space it needs but um, I'm gonna leave it there all right let's do some hearts because I know we've got a lot of people that love hearts so in game, they give you these three options, um, none of which I super love. Um, they're actually not my favorite way to build hearts. And so I'm going to show you a few of my favorites. Let's do these in a nice uh, blue, I think, maybe a blue green. Let's go there. Okay. So starting with the tiniest, cutest little heart, um, I actually like the way the blending uh, kind of smooths this one out. Um, and so all you need is those one, two, three, four, five, six pixels, and you have a beautiful little heart. Um, let's go one size bigger. So if we want to build another heart, we can start here. But that one looks a little pointy, and I don't love it. So we're going to come back around in a little bit and see if we can smooth that one out. Um, if we go a little bit bigger... Let's see. When you're building hearts, all you're really doing is just making sure that you're mirroring everything. You want it to be nice and full, but you also want to make sure all your pixels stay rounded. Um, and with the blending features, it can sometimes get pointy when you don't want it to get pointy, which is where we'll come back and fill in with those pixels. So if you see, this is um, kind of an in-between for their first heart and their second heart. Um, I don't tend to use the really, really big ones just because they don't really fit with when I'm adding them into designs. 
Um, and then let's do a little sideways heart just so that we have, let me make sure I have enough room. Um, we wanna make sure that we can add all sorts of cute little features. So there we go. Um, and this one looks really square and blocky. So let's pick a transition color to help kind of blend those together. So again, we're gonna go in between the background and uh, what we have as our color. And so we need something, let's start there. So I went a little bit more warm toned with that green um, and lighter since my background is light. And if you look, that doesn't quite give us what we're looking for. Um, so let's go one more um, and maybe down. There we go. So you start to see, if you watch the canvas, you can see how it changes and transitions. You want one that almost blends in, um, but also still rounds out that shape. I think I like us there. So let's go and do that with some of our other ones. This one felt a little pointy, so we can round that one out too. Um, and maybe even this one. No, that one doesn't look good. <laughs> We're gonna leave it there. Um, so there's some really nice heart shapes. Uh, and now let's do some flowers. So you've got the basic little flower, which I actually don't love the way it looks in this game. I think it looks really blocky in ways that it didn't in New Leaf. Um, oh, we need way more saturation on that one. So back in New Leaf days, um, this little flower was perfect. I'm gonna use the yellow from the star. Um, I just think it looks too much like a diamond in this game. Um, with the smoothing, it just kind of all blends together. So I could come up with a couple other ones that I prefer. Um, so we're gonna do those. So if you want something a little bit more full, like a rose um, or even like a dahlia maybe, I hope that's the right flower. Um, I'm also just maybe totally wrong on that. Um, we're gonna make one that is a little bit more of a full version of a flower. Um, so let's get a couple other pinks going. I'm gonna use three different tones, um, a dark, a medium, and a light. And I'm gonna have to adjust these as we go just to make sure we're hitting the blending that we need. Let's try those. Okay, so if you start with some of the same shapes that we use to build the leaves at the top, uh, you can actually build a pretty cute flower. And if you look, we don't have quite enough contrast there. So I'm going to bump down uh, my first two colors just to really help fill out, there we go, um, and help it pop off the canvas as well. <laughs> that feels better. Um, and now let's go ahead and add some leaf detail. So we're gonna add two little pixels up the side. That really helps to kind of give us that uh, almost lotus flower maybe. Maybe that's what we're looking at. Um, and if you want, you can add some shadow. Sometimes the pixels, pixels do weird things, but it's up to you. Maybe I'll leave it on the one side that didn't do anything weird. So there's like a little lotus flower or bud. You can even come back and give it just a little bit more detail. So adding a highlight there and maybe a shadow there helps to fill it out a little bit. Another one, let's start with the basic flower shape. So we have this guy. Let's do it with our mid-tone. So if we wanna take this up just a level, um, we're gonna build a little bit more of a, a dynamic flower. I'm gonna make sure I don't run into my heart over there. So this one just kind of gives us a little bit more flow. It almost looks like a pinwheel. Um, it's not giving me quite the effect I'm wanting, so I might adjust my colors again. <laughs> That's too light. That's more of the shape I'm looking for. So let's see if I can adjust my other colors to help keep that shape. There we go. Let's go there. So that gives us a little pinwheel flower. Um, we can do another one that looks like this. Again, starting with that same basic shape, but this time we're gonna use the darkest color around the center. And then we're gonna build it out and then fill in with that really light color. 
and it gives us this pretty little, uh, it still looks kind of like a diamond, but I think it's got a little bit more depth to it than the other ones. Now let's do two more flowers. I'm gonna do a little bud and then uh, one more flower, but this time with leaves. So let's build the first bud shape. This is a uh, take on that basic leaf shape, but we're gonna add some leaves around it and keep the pixels in pink for the flower, um, just so that we can kind of take it and transform it. So a lot of these are the same basic shapes, um, but they give us something totally different when using different colors. And so this gives us kind of like a little flower bud. And again, I don't love the way these are blending, so I might make some color adjustments as we go. So let's do one more. So again, starting with that yellow center. Let's do it here. This time we're gonna start with the lightest color around the outside. Fill in with our medium pink. And then from here, we're gonna add on some little leaves. And let's add some shading right there. So this gives us like a little flower bud that you can uh, do like a cute floral pattern with. Um, again, you can take all these shapes and just kind of turn them um, and use them again. All right, the last two things I'm gonna do are some mushrooms because mushrooms are adorable. Um, so we need a nice neutral, uh, like brownish gray as our mushroom stem. Uh, so let's go let's start here. That might be too dark, but. So let's start with a little brown mushroom. And we're going to start by building its stem. And then we need a little bit of a darker color. Let me check where that one was. So we're going to go a little bit darker for our under the mushroom cap. And then let's do a nice brown mushroom cap. I like the orange browns, I think, a little bit better. Ta da! Cute little mushroom. And then let's do a red one for a good measure. So let's pick a nice kind of orangey red. It's a little bit of depth. And we're gonna do a cute little red mushroom cap. Use our deeper brown and then our really dark brown. I think that this one might be a little too dark. So I'm gonna pop that up just to, uh, there we go. And then of course you have to add little dots to it. So let's use, uh, let's use that pink color maybe. It might be too dark, but there you go. So now you have little mushroom dots. So one of the last things that I like to do just to kind of help fill out the designs, right now they look a little flat. They don't really pop off the edge of the paper um, or the canvas. And so I'm going to choose a color that is very similar to my canvas color, but slightly deeper just to give us some shadow um, where we can kind of pop it off. Uh, so that is much too pink, there we go. Uh, let's test this one. So I really like to go through and just kind of add a drop shadow. So if you look, that's not quite dark enough to really make a difference. Let's drop it down one more. There we go. And so just by adding this drop shadow, um, they really start to just kind of become way more visible. It's something I do a lot on my flags, um, just cause I feel like otherwise all the pixels tend to blend together and it's just not as, I don't know, it just doesn't quite feel right. So you can do this to any or some or all of your little designs. You can even do it behind the stars. Ooh, I kind of like that. And it just kind of helps them appear more. Um, so, about all. Um, I don't really know how to end this. Uh, hopefully I didn't talk too crazy weird. Sometimes adding the drop shadow will change the way your pixels look, so just be aware of that. Um, 
But yeah, it's a lot of color game. Um, knowing color theory can be really helpful, um, especially when finding those transition colors. So things like to help the yellow blend into the back of the canvas or to help the hearts kind of smooth themselves out. I do a lot of just playing around and watching the canvas and adjusting colors. Um, well, I hope that this was really helpful. Um, if it wasn't, I'm sorry, this is my first one. Um, but let me know. Um, this is all I got for you. Thank you so much. Bye.